Eric King coming to you once again from Nugget of Truth. Uh, I want to give a brief look overview of how the parables, the seven parables that we've been studying in our Kingdom Discourse series, how these seven parables flow in a way that gives you food for thought. In other words, I'm going to briefly give you some stuff to think about here. Uh, um, those of you that are studying the parables of the Kingdom of God with us here at Nugget of Truth and the Shepherd's Way. So if you have your Bibles, go to Matthew chapter 13. And in Matthew chapter 13, we're going to skim through this. And, and, and again, I'm going to give you food for thought. So I want you to think about these things as I, as I speak to you. Now, <clears throat> Jesus says in verse 11 of Matthew 13, that what he's about to tell them, the secrets of the kingdom of God, um, uh, or the kingdom of heaven, um, have been given to you. In other words, he had intimated a lot of these things to his inner group, his disciples, uh, because they had um, inquired after hearing him teach parabolically. Quite frankly, one of the reasons why Jesus taught parabolically is because the ones that truly wanted to understand would secretly come to him and inquire, and he would he would watch them, and he would knew that they were his true that they were the true um, disciples. And you know we've given the analogy of a magnet, take a magnet and you run it through a, a box of sand and you pull it out and those iron filaments stick to it. And that's what these parables are doing. Jesus is giving the parables so that those who have eyes to see and ears to hear will truly take time out to see and hear and understand. And just like those iron filaments collect on that magnet, so shall Jesus' true disciples uh, cling and stick to him. He'll get what he's getting through the parables. So as we teach the parables, again, they're, in a sense, they're like a sifting process. They're like a net. That's a hint of some, a deeper teaching, but the parables are like a net. Okay, so he tells them in verse 11, he's going to give them the secrets of the kingdom. <clears throat> then he proceeds to explain to them why some of them will not comprehend or see, and he quotes the prophet Isaiah. And then again, he, in verse 16, he says to those who understand... Realize how blessed you are because there are many who wanted to understand the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven and longed to understand more fully, such as the prophets of old and students of God's word. Um, they couldn't understand like Jesus was about ready to reveal to them. The explanation that Jesus is giving to them was quite a revelation. And only those who were truly activated through the Holy Spirit were, were catching on to what Jesus was saying. So... Then he gives a parable, and he talks about the parable as somebody explains the parable, the parable of the sower that he gave at the beginning of uh, chapter 13, which we didn't cover, but he gives the, the first parable there. He talks about um, the seed being planted in different soils, and of course Jesus plants the seed of the gospel, his message, in, in the soil of men's hearts. And it talks about how Certain soils won't allow that seed to grow, and, and so they, different things happen. But some soil is prepared for it, and it takes root, and it begins to grow. So, Jesus goes on to say that this is the most important parable for, any, for all of his beginning disciples to understand. And he, um, he reiterates this, and in, in, you can read these parables. Some of these parables are um, recorded in the other Gospels with a little bit more detail. And so you can get a fuller picture of what's going on. But Jesus says that this first parable is extremely important for his disciples to understand because if you don't understand that one, you, you will not understand whether or not you're a true student or disciple of his. So that's key. That's the first of the seven parables that I'm giving an overview on here in Matthew chapter 13. The second parable starts in verse 24 and is the weeds among the wheat. Now this is interesting um, without getting into the full explanation of this, you have to go to our Kingdom Discourse series to get that. But here, Jesus begins to explain to them what's going to happen um, uh, during the seven-year tribulation period. He's specifically um, teaching uh, uh, the church to understand what's going to happen in light of, of, of those that are left behind. Those that are left behind. And how there's going to be a struggle that millennial kingdom is not going to come without a fight. And that's what he's covering here, that that millennial kingdom is not going to come without a spiritual fight. So that's the weeds among the wheat. And again, I would encourage you to watch our Kingdom Discourse series on this because this, this parable here, this second parable, 
is not talking about when the church is going to be here. It's talking about the, the, the very beginning of it talks about what happens to those who uh, sleep and are left behind. Now the third parable starts in uh, verse 31 of Matthew chapter 13, and it's the parable of the mustard seed. Now Jesus begins to go talk more about the kingdom and mystery now. And the mustard seed, of course, being, being the church, ultimately, at the mustard tree, that is, and the fact that there's people sitting in it, and, and the fowls of the air even are sitting in the church, unfortunately, in that parable. But he immediately goes from explaining what's going to happen during the chaotic tribulation period to back to, meanwhile, something's going on here on this planet, and it's called the birth of the church, and that's the mustard seed. In verse 33... He covers the yeast. He immediately jumps now from uh, to another uh, portion of understanding the key, setting up of the ultimate kingdom of God, and he talks here about he's talking about the millennial kingdom, quite frankly. And most teachers aren't teaching this parable correctly about that that uh, that dough, three measures of dough there, representing the beginning of the millennial kingdom, and then how it starts, and then how it ends. It ends with. The fermentation again of sin. Uh, again, I would encourage you to watch our Kingdom Discourse series to get the details of these parables. You'll find them quite astounding. Um, so then we get up to the fifth parable, which is the hidden treasure. And there we find that the hidden treasure has to do with the title deed of the earth, the um, uh, purchasing uh, back Israel through Yeshua HaMashiach, and also the fact that the church is plugged into the promises of Abraham or Abraham. And uh, though the church is not Israel, it is, it is participant in the covenantal promises of the covenant of Abraham. And so that, again, is a very deep uh, parable. And, and by the way, it's only a one-verse parable. But when we show that Jesus Christ can say a lot in a very... Uh, in one short paragraph, he can give you a lot to chew on. And so again, I urge you to watch our Kingdom Discourse series on these to get the details of them. I'm giving you food for thought. We get to parable 6, starting in verse 45. Um, the pearl of great va value, and of course there, it's the, dis the discussion of again, the kingdom and mystery of the church, and how that Jesus purchased that pearl of great price with his own blood. And he bought that pearl, and that pearl representing the bride of Christ. And then finally in uh, verse 47, the parable of the net. And without going too deep into the parable of the net, I will say that that, that net involves the understanding of the parables and angel fishermen. And again, I would urge you to watch uh, our Kingdom Discourse series so that you can get all of these down. It's very important for Christians to understand the parables and what they mean for them today. And when we teach the parables, we take things out of both the old, the Tanakh, and the new covenant, the new, the Old Testament even, and the New Testament, and we bring them together to understand these parables as Yeshua commands us. He said to us, therefore every teacher of the law who has been instructed about the kingdom of heaven is like the owner of a house who brings out of his storeroom new treasures as well as old. So again, I would encourage you to watch our Kingdom Discourse series and begin to understand the Kingdom parables. There's 12 of them all together. Matthew chapter 13 covers 7. So, food for thought. Get busy. Study here at the Shepherd's Way and Nugget of Truth. Talk to you next time.